Hello YouTube, Evil Twin X back again with episode 21 of my Atlas Lathe restoration. Thank you all for following along. If you watched last episode, you know that uh, I acquired this small quarter horsepower GE motor that I had to rewire um, to work with the on and off switch with uh, the lathe. And I had successfully did that and I thought it would be a good start to get me up and running since uh, I needed a power plant. Just about to sort of throw the belt on and get the lathe running under power where I took, as you know, a little bit of a hiatus. I actually acquired a, a motor. It is a half horsepower. The specs work out. I don't know if you can see that. I don't think it shows up on camera. Uh, it's a half horsepower, 1725 RPM. It runs nice and quiet. Even has a three prong plug. I am tempted just to bolt this on and get the lathe running, but I really want to do everything properly. Rewire this motor like I did the little quarter horsepower motor. So anyway, here we go I'm Gonna open this up wire this for the uh, switch and take it from there All right, well this looks a little bit more complicated than the other motor and I'm not surprised I realized that this motor is can be wired for a 110 or 220 and I'm guessing maybe that's why this is wired like this so I have these dual wires for everything I'm actually glad I opened this up so I you know I don't like um, these should have cap nuts on them obviously so when I do that That'll be done correctly. I'm going to mark these before I pull the tape off so I don't lose, I don't lose, I don't get them all confused basically. Let me do that and then I'll take this plug out. You can see why they didn't use cap nuts. I think they soldered these wires together because I can't get them undone. All right, I um, I wired everything up. I tried to videotape it, but uh, the area is kind of small to work in, and you can see my hands take up almost uh, the whole screen. But I'll run you through what I did. I cut the uh, I cut the the big clump of solder off because I really wanted to use cap nuts, and I did that. Left myself as much wire as I could, and then I stripped the cloth wire back a little bit. Actually, I used an X-Acto blade to, it was pretty brittle to slice it. I didn't want to yank on the wires too much. And I kept track of which one was the power, which I, uh, I only have a yellow and black cap. Um, the yellow is power and the black is common. And then I put one of these, one of these connectors on the ground and screwed it, it, screwed it in right here. So right now it's just wired for a plug, three prong plug. I'm going to plug it in, test to see if my wiring is correct. Hopefully the lights won't go out. And if it is, then I will put this on the lathe and strip in toggle switch. So let's do a test and see if this motor works or I'm going to have to grab my flashlight. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> All right, did it. She is working. All right, what I did is I used my X-Acto to slice open the plug wire and I pulled out the black and I'll trim it and strip the wires back and then wire it into the toggle switch. I already have those wires run um, on the lathe from the when I did the previous motor. 
eventually I'll put this all in an electrical box, but uh, this is just to get me going in the meantime. And I'll cap nut these and uh, use some electrical tape and clean it all up. So I put the motor on the mounting plate temporarily, put some bolts in just to hold it in place and reduce any vibration. I really wouldn't want that walking off and falling. Um, that would suck. So that's in place. Obviously I put the pulley on. And over here, I wired in the switch, the toggle switch, these two thin wires that goes to the switch. And it is off right now and unplugged. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug it in. So didn't turn on, which is good. So let's give it a shot. There we go. Flip this switch off. All right. So the new motor is wired. I'll just clean up those wires and I'm going to uh, finish mounting the motor. Look at that crazy, complicated gear setup. It is a, a beauty of a machine. I think I want to see if it actually runs. That's right, after all this time, I think I want to do a test fire. I'm kind of nervous. It's been a while since this thing has ever run. I'm actually not even sure how long it's sat. It's been almost a whole year approaching for me working on this. But uh, I think I'm here. I think I'm at that point. So. Making, making sure everything is moving freely. I'm gonna close the gear cover. I'm going from second step in. I don't have a step pulley over here, so it's whatever that setup is, it's on the larger diameter part. I'm gonna plug it in. Make sure it's off. It's in neutral right now. I'm going to double check. It's in back ear because I don't want it to run super fast. Everything is, is lubed up and oiled. But here we go. My first test firing of the lathe. I am uh I am a little bit nervous to say the least. So here we go. Making sure it's in neutral. Ready? Three, two, one. Can I tell you how, I, how happy I am right now? I want to do one more test. I want to see how the carriage, the auto feed works for both the compound and the, and the carriage. So I'm going to put it in gear. So I guess that's forward. I'm going to try reverse now.
Well, there you have it. She is officially a runner. Um, it's taken me a while to get here. And I do have a few more things that I need to take care of before I actually put a piece of metal in there and turn it. Not major stuff, but I think, uh, I think I've come a long way. And uh, I'm pretty stoked. I'm pretty stoked. It's been almost four years since I purchased this. And I don't know how long it had sat before I brought it home. But um, it is... It is on its way to uh, making chips. So thanks again, guys, for sticking with me and following along. And if you're new to this, check out uh, this long series. I know there's uh, 21 other episodes. But uh, yeah, check it out. I have a few more to do before I start cutting metal. But I am getting there. I am so getting there. Evil Twin X. Signing off.